did um, delighted to have Ned join us. He is, um, many of you know him, but you might not know that um, in addition to just being an awesome guy, he's like proper theologically trained and a sweet writer. So um, thank you so much for joining us today as a preacher. Th thanks so much for having me. Um, it's great to be part of the St. David's community. You can hear me okay? Great, okay. Um, well, what a week. Um, I started working on the sermon on Monday and then um, Tuesday happened. And what a terrible day that was from one perspective. You know, people were despondent, dejected, feeling their neighbors hated them, that all was lost, that there was destruction in the wind for a way of life, even for our country, Tuesday. But you know what? It wasn't really Tuesday, not theologically. In Christianity, we look at time theologically. There's a whole branch of theology called eschatology. And all of Jesus' stories in Matthew 24 are eschatological, which is a hard word to say. So, so eschatology is the idea in Christianity that everything is leading somewhere, that there's a resolution to the story, that there's a, going to be a satisfying conclusion. And as Christians, we actually believe in this story. We believe in storytelling. We believe there's a destination. And that's one of the key differences between Christianity and other religious stories that talk of eternal return or karma or an endless cycle. Christianity says there's a point to things. It's going somewhere. It's going to resolve that after darkness, there's a dawn and that we'll go into that great light of dawn together, that we will be part of that morning sunrise. In fact, there's a great African-American preacher, Shadrach Meshach Lockridge who was pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in San Diego for 40 years. And he summed up the whole arc of eschatology in the Bible by one simple statement. Pastor Lockridge told us years ago that for Christians, it's Friday, but Sunday is coming. Here's how he said it. He said, it's deep, dark Friday night. Jesus is praying. Peter is sleeping. Judas is betraying, but Sunday's a coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know yet. Sunday is a coming. It's Friday. My Savior has been beaten, robed in scarlet, crowned with thorns. And all of them don't know. Sunday is a coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. Evil is grinning. It's Friday. The Savior is being nailed to the cross. They raise him up next to criminals and celebrate their evil deeds. It's Friday. Deepest, darkest Friday. That's how I felt this week. That's how so many of us felt. Friday was there. And someday, somehow, sun, Sunday might come. In the words of that great African-American hymn, we shall overcome someday, someday. But when? For people following the election, that day arrived this morning on Sunday with the headlines that you can see in the newspapers. Here we are Sunday morning, the tide has turned. Friday has passed, the bright dawn of a resurrected Sunday morning is here upon us. People are celebrating, dancing in the streets. Isn't it great? Isn't God celebrating with us too in this great election? Well, here's the thing, no. God tells us clearly in the prophet Amos that she doesn't care about these celebrations, these noise-making festivals, all these petty areas in American politics where we think we've won. Why not? Because God cares about something much greater than our politics or our policies or even our country. God is not an American. God doesn't care about citizenship or what banner hangs outside your house or what you put on your ballot. God cares about the beloved kingdom. A larger purpose beyond any election. To be clear, this election was not a Christian election. Biden is not Jesus, neither is Kamala Harris. It's not the election of Jesus Christ. But in the end, we have to realize there's no politician who will rescue us from our shared humanity, our greed, our inability to forgive each other, and our ability, our, and our inability to be fully woke human beings. It's always Friday with us fallen human beings. 
Christ can be seen in political movements or historical moments, but fundamentally, Jesus is beyond history. Jesus talks about this great hopeful story beyond history all the time. And in the gospel today, he uses the metaphor of a wedding feast and welcoming celebrants into the feast. The part we read today is in fact within a larger group of Jesus's teachings on the Mount of Olives, where he's telling his disciples about the future. The parable as always opens with this familiar phrase, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. The whole scene that follows is a metaphor about Christ's kingdom. In fact, this is one of a whole set of stories that Jesus tells us about the kingdom of God. In this passage, there's the metaphor of a wedding banquet. It's fascinating to know that a wedding banquet at that time wasn't one evening. It was seven days of celebration, kind of like this week. It took a week. And during that week, the union of the two people were celebrated and honored. And in this story, he concentrates on that final night when the bridesmaids would await the arrival of the bridegroom and greet the bridegroom with a procession of light out of darkness. Waiting on a dark late night Friday for the light to come, that's what we did this week. So we know how that feels. And these bridesmaids in the story had waited with lamps lit for a while, but they didn't plan for how long the dark time of waiting would take. Some of them got tired. Some of them stopped being prepared. They relaxed their guard. The point of the story is to keep your light ready, keep your light alive, even in a time of darkness. Be vigilant. Vigilance for the disciples of Christ then and now, it means to keep creating the kingdom. In Matthew's gospel, those tasks of creating the kingdom mean bear witness that the kingdom is here. Welcome the stranger and the, and the immigrant. Feed the hungry. Take care of the poor, visit the sick and imprisoned, and turn the world ever closer in every heartbeat towards that beloved community. Sunday morning is a journey and destination. It is not static, not dead in the tomb. We have to keep believing that Sunday morning will arrive. Because let's be honest, this election doesn't end everything. And the reality of so many people around the globe and even here in America, it's still Friday. People are still dying of coronavirus, a lonely death in a hospital room. Homelessness and drug addiction still run rampant. Unkindness and heartlessness grow apace as we keep growing our prosperity. The system still isn't just. The world's economy isn't just. Peace is challenged every day, everywhere. It isn't over. This is the pause before the storm. It is still deepest, darkest Friday night for so many. Jesus anticipates us. He warns us at the end of the chapter that we must always be ready for the son of man is coming at an unexpected hour. And I wanna stay in that phrase, the son of man for a second, because I actually was raised in, in China. And in China, the emperor was known as, as Tianzi, the son of heaven. And yet Jesus doesn't choose the son of heaven or the son of God. He says the son of man. He's a human being. He's always with us. He's of our community. He is among us in everyone, in the guise of the poor, the homeless, the oppressed, even in the face of the Trump lover, the Nazi, even that has an aspect of Jesus, someone we are supposed to show unconditional love towards. We are called to become that waterfall of righteousness. We are called to bring the kingdom out of our hearts. We are the kingdom of God. And we don't rely on an election or a ballot box to show love. We are commanded to be love. We are a community that seeks so much more than petty politics. We strive to create this kingdom of God on earth with no divisions, no discrimination, no lack of care for each other, a place where no one has to be homeless, where no one is destroyed by poverty or medical bills, where no one suffers from drug addiction, where no one's mental or physical illness keeps them from benefiting from all of God's grace. We strive for a kingdom that is not here yet. The election we went through can be seen as a metaphor, a moment. And Jesus tells us stories like the one that we just went through, to get across to us that the beloved kingdom is not a single time or place or set of people or occasion. It's a journey and an activity, 
not a destination. It's an ongoing union between people and God, a continuous celebration, a movable feast. So this is not a time to celebrate without action. This isn't a time to step back and gloat. It's a time to realize and remember it's Friday. Still, deepest, darkest Friday. We are always walking with Jesus to Calvary, our spirits burdened, stumbling forward with the terrible inequities of our society and our shoulders. But we know that Sunday is a coming. As the words of Amos tells us, it's Friday, but righteousness will roll down like a waterfall. We should keep our lamps alight, keep our oil ready, keep our hearts ready for truth and righteousness to break through, to illumine all things, to fill our world with grace and mercy, peace and hope. We must be ready for that greater Sunday morning of hope. One day, my friends, we can bring together a great celebration. Keep our flame ready, put oil in your lamp, because Sunday's a coming. Thanks be to God. Amen.